Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and this week I made the Little Mermaid. Now because Ariel is a half fish, half person princess, I figured it would make sense to build her top half first before getting to work on the bottom half, so I've cut off a chunk of roughly Ariel sized clay that I can start to shape into her oceany physique. To make her mouth, I'll cut a great big slice into the front of her face and hollow that out before adding some large lumps onto the sides of her head so that I can build up her traditionally saggy fish lip jowls. Once these have been blended into the rest of the body, I can start to refine the shape of the mouth, making sure to highlight that pouty princess bottom lip before stabbing some big old divots above her jowls so that I can drop some great big Disney princess eyeballs in place. Then it's just a case of refining the shape of her upper lips and adding some facial detail in to make it a bit more interesting. I'm building this mostly from memory, but I couldn't remember exactly which fish Ariel is based off of, and I ended up going with a slightly fantastical version of a grouper, so I apologize if this isn't exactly movie accurate. I'll poke a couple sniffing holes in front of her eyes so she can smell the sea air before wrapping some little wormy dealies around her eyes to build up the surrounding skin a bit and help make them look a little bit more bulgy. Otherwise the face is mostly finished so I can get to work on the texturing. To make the scales I want to use the flat of my sculpting spatula which is the perfect size and shape except I want the shape to be inverted so the scales stack one on top of the other. To that end I'm gonna make a roller. I'll start with a little bit of dowel that I can then paint with some bacon bond so I can stick a sheet of clay onto the end and roll into a lovely smooth cylinder. I'll then use my spatula to recreate the reverse scales along the length of my roller overlapping each subsequent row until I've got a delightful little fish scale lollipop. Rolling this along Ariel's body will impart the negative texture into the soft clay leaving me with beautiful overlapping scales fit for a Disney princess. I'll then mount her on a block of wood to keep from smooshing her lovely scales with my fingers and get to work adding the final finishing fish textures to the rest of her face and underside. To make her fins I've rolled out a sheet of clay I'll cut a couple circles out of then carve those down into fin shaped shapes. I can then squish and pull them until they're a bit more organic looking before sticking them onto a plastic sheet so I can roll some final finishing fin-ish texture onto using my ball stylus and a silicone shaper. The plastic sheet means that I can easily remove them from the table and stick them into place on Ariel's body so it looks like they're supporting her weight. Finally I can blend them into the rest of the body and set her upper body aside so that I can get to work making her lower half. Her legs start out as little balls of clay that I can roll and pinch and pull until they're long tapered tubes which I can then bend at the knee and add a bit of muscular definition to. If memory serves me, Ariel spends an awful lot of time under the sea which means she's going to be swimming around a lot which means she's probably going to have some pretty strong legs. I considered giving her flippers instead of bare feet but I'm well aware that some of my sculptures tend towards the weird and I really wanted this one to be as movie accurate as possible so it's just a pair of bare feet instead. I have of course made two legs which get stuck in place on her lower half and then I can get to work making her incredibly muscular butt. To make her toes I'll snip four lines into the tip of my foot to give me five toes that I can then shape into something vaguely resembling the end of a humanoid limb. Finally to keep this channel predominantly family friendly I'll finish Ariel off with her trademark clamshell bikini bottoms. Otherwise that's the sculpting done which means she's ready to be tossed in the oven before a quick slam primer to get her ready for painting. I'll give her legs a dozen or so coats of super light skin tones until I've got a nice even coverage before realizing that this version of Ariel is completely wrong. At this point I'm so embarrassed to even admit it, but I forgot her dorsal fin. Fortunately I haven't gotten very far into the painting process and it's easy enough to attach it after the fact, then pop it back into the oven to cure and finally reprime the fin so I'm good to go. 
It's generally not a problem to put acrylic paint in the oven and I'll often do it when I'm using colored clays since I like to paint between layers anyways, but with the light skin tones I had to do a little touch up since she developed a pretty gnarly jaundice. Otherwise with the legs finished I can get on to painting her upper body which, again, this is all from memory but I'm pretty sure her scales were blue and her fins were red so I'll get a layer of blue on all the scales then gently sponge some lighter turquoise over top. Finally, for a bit of shading and to give the scales a bit of depth, I'll give the entire thing a nice matching turquoise glaze on top. Or maybe it's a wash, I don't actually know what the difference is, but I like to toss the terms around periodically in the hopes that it makes me sound like I know what I'm doing. I'll give the fins the aforementioned deep red top coat, and while that paint is drying, I'll give the inside of the mouth a peach base coat followed by slightly darker terracotta and purple gradient. I'll then go back to my scales and give them all a light bluish white dry brush to bring out the details before dusting my fins with a series of orangish red and reddish orange highlights followed by a final pale orange to nearly white dry brushing on the ends. Ariel's clamshell bikini bottoms then get a purple base coat followed by a lighter purple highlighting to well, highlight the details I guess, then I'll paint her eyes with a white to yellow fisheye gradient with a big black, slightly wonky dot in the middle. This will then get a big glob of UV resin to really make them stick out and I can give her a final full body bath and high gloss varnish since she'll be posing on a rock in the middle of the ocean and I expect she's somewhat damp. Otherwise that's Ariel finished which means it's time to make her watery pedestal. I'll start with an aerial sized block of foam that I can then cut down to make it look like a rocky outcropping. Once it's roughly the right size, I'll use my knife to cut lots of grooves and striations into it so that it's ready for the final texturizing which, if you're a long time viewer of this channel, you know I like to do with a rock. The trick with applying texture via rock is that you need to have a calm and steady hand. Now with that I've got a pretty excellent looking little mermaid perch, but with the amount I've cut off it's now a tiny bit too short. Fortunately, this is easily remedied by adding extra chunks of foam until it's an appropriate height, at which point a little extra choppy choppy with a knife and smacky smacky with a rock, and it's ready to get placed on its forever home, which will be this little blue foam base. I'll then give the entire base a black Mod Podge covering which both protects the foam from my clumsy attempts to handle it as well as provide a black base coat to paint on top of. Now the aerial I remember is perched on sort of a sandy brown rock jutting out of the waves so I'll start with a dark brown getting into every nook and cranny followed by progressively lighter browns brushed haphazardly until I've got a nice brown rock with dark cracks and crevices. By not letting each coat of paint dry before applying the next color I'm able to give the rock a somewhat natural looking coloration by way of wet blending. Wet blending also means that I don't have to wait for the paint to dry between coats which is good because I don't really have patience for that. Eventually though I will reach the final coat and I'll have to let that dry at which point I can start to give my rock a heavy dusting of sandy beige followed by a bone white on the edges to bring out the sharpness of the cracks and striations. I'm gonna make my ocean using clear silicone caulking so to make it look like a deep blue ocean I'm gonna paint the base with a deep blue ocean blue. Once that's dried I can start to apply the initial layer of silicone directly over top. Now once I've got a pretty solid coverage I can use my finger dipped in a little isopropyl alcohol to smooth it all out and create a somewhat uniform silicone ocean. I'll then let this set up for a few minutes so that it's somewhat firm and tacky while I get to work making my waves. I'm trying to make that iconic little mermaid scene where Ariel is gasping for air on top of the rock while the waves are crashing behind her which means I need to make some great big waves. To do that I've squirted out a whole pack of UV resin onto a perspex sheet then used a stir stick to swirl and spread the resin until it's looking kinda wavy and splashy then I can blast it with a UV lamp to cure it. Now UV resin cures best in the absence of oxygen so if your UV resin is still a bit tacky despite being under the lamp try submerging it in a little water path for its final curing. Finally a quick blast with a heat gun will soften the resin and allow me to bend and shape it into a slightly more wavy looking wave which I can then stick into my partially set silicone. 
Then it's just a case of making a few more waves to fill out the rest of the scene, then waiting for the initial silicone layer to set, at which point I can start to fill in the gaps with more and more layers of silicone. I'll squeeze some more silicone onto both sides of the wave as well so I can use my finger to drag some water texture onto the waves so they're a little less flat looking. Otherwise that's the waves and ocean done, which means all I need to do is make some sea foam. This is a simple mixture of gloss, mod podge, and snow flock mixed together that I can then apply to the crests of the waves and the tips of the splashes. Finally, a final coat of high gloss varnish will make my rock wet and my waves moist, so all that's left to do is pop Ariel in place and that's us done and on to the glamour shots. As always, a massive thank you to those absolute gems over on Patreon, and a special shout out to the newest of them, Kitty Lover Mew Mew, Sibla Tortu, Christina, Lion's Brush, Jonathan and Alice Montgomery, Alyssa Verasami, Ava VP, S. Barishan, Grant Lee Smith, Geeko 170, Monkey D. Celia, Lyra and Caden, Moss234, Michael Short, and John A. Griffiths. You are the wave-battered, sandy brown rock upon which this half-fish, half-man monstrosity of a channel resides. If you like this video, then leave me a comment down below letting me know which type of fish is your favorite. The first 500 comments will be the first 500 that show up when I sort them all by oldest first. Otherwise, we'll um, see you next time. Cheers.